Okay, hi everybody. Welcome back for another draft video for Channel 3 and Drafts. So we open Feather. It's cute. It's a gold card. Hard to cast. Uh, takes too much setup. Jaya is just, I think, much, much better for limited. It keeps us in one color. Like if Feather was a, you know, God Eternal type two color card, of course I would take it. Or if it was a powerful Planeswalker. But all it is is just a efficient flyer with some upside. It's not that impressive. Well, there's Burning Prophet that we could consider to stay on color. It's a 2 3 with Jayam. I think Lauren Enforcer is better, but I was just listening to uh, Limited Resources right now, Ryan Spain. And uh, yeah, I mean, just because of the color preference and because of Jaya, I'm gonna take Burning Prophet. I think they're, okay. Again, Larwin Enforcer is stronger, but this is a card um, that can work very well in any red deck, so. Okay, now we're gonna take actually Trusted Pegasus over Larwin Enforcer. Trusted Pegasus is a little stronger in my book because of um, uh, Rally of Wings, which actually won me a draft recently. I think it's not that it's a good card, it's just undervalued. I think Rally of Wings, people don't take it when they should because it comes up so rare, but it's another one of those fringe situations where you take the six mana artifact uh, if it's really, really late in the pack and if there's nothing else you're going to play, just because you might open Karn in one of your next packs and then it becomes a 6-6 six, six that you can get for free, which becomes a 6-6 six, six creature. So, and Karn comes up, you know, often enough a few drafts. So, anyway, here it's easy. Spell Gorge, you're weird. And now I'm a little happier taking out Burning Prophet because these guys go very well together. Of course, the strongest archetype, as always, is Red Blue. But red-white can also be very good because when it's open, it's really open. You're getting late, uh, what do you call them? The gold two drop. I think it's something with Janir. It gets plus one, plus one when you want to ask her road, basically. Uh, let's see. We could consider another color. We can take a card that synergizes with Spell Gorger. Like Bond of Passion. Bond of Passion is a little bit better with Jai. I mean, deal three instead of deal, deal two can be significant. You can kill a bigger creature than you, than you could otherwise, in which case it becomes good. And if you steal the red creature with Jai, you can also deal plus one. So this could be a powerful card. All right, yeah, God Pharaoh statue, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, it's not good enough to take here. Here, I think the pick is Enforcer Griffin. There's also an argument for taking Invading Manticore, though. It would be our second two-drop. It's better in the red-blue deck, which or red-black, which cares more about a mass, which we might end up being. I could take it just for signaling purposes, though, because uh, this can increase the probability of us getting more red cards in pack three. So maybe there's some value in doing that, because it's quite close with the Griffin. It's not that far off. And again, I'm because of Jai, I'm kind of interested in being more red. But here I'm going to take a contentious plan, and hopefully the dream of red blue will be alive. Maybe there's an argument for taking Raskus Finisher, but I'll take contentious plan because it's cheaper. And look at that, we get a really late Tamiyo's Epiphany and Honor the God Pharaoh. Uh, but I think Tamiyo's Epiphany is way stronger. It triggers Spell Gorger, triggers, triggers Burning Prophet, and now we get a very late Honor the God Pharaoh. Excellent card. I value it very highly. Definitely better than the Cyclops. Again, we want to maximize instants and sorceries. So here's a perfect example, right? I am going to take Aid the Fallen because it is a really, really good card. And if we do end up red, red uh, black, I will play this. Uh, but that was a spot where we could have easily taken the 6-6 taken the six, six in case we open a card. And it would be pretty off, funny if we open a card next pack. 
Here it's Turd Ogre again, deals three when it comes into play if you have Jaya. Uh, I don't think I want a second Bond of Passion, but it auto-picked for me anyway. Uh, and last, last pick, Card Descent. That'll be funny, Double Bond of Passion deck. Yeah, we may not even play the first one. The, the proper pick actually there would have been the, the white two drop. But again, taking a red card for signaling purposes could also have value. Last pick, top of the statue, which is not an irrelevant card. Very good against Parhelion Patrol and some of those pesky uh, rare artifacts. Mizium Tank is probably better than the 2 3 that draws you a card. You could also sideboard him in against board wipe effects. Like if you see your opponents playing time wipe, if you have it, it's a playable card in that case. It gives you some extra board presence. Yeah, so I'm glad I took Aid the Fallen because see now we open Dariel, which is a really good uncommon. And again, we can splash it. I think it's uh, uh, it's not really splashable because you actually do want it to come down on three. But if we get enough black cards, then maybe we can have some sort of mix between uh, black, red, and blue play Grixis colors, which is a really good arcade, is a really, really good car, uh, color combination. I think actually that combines the best three colors in this format. The weakest colors are green, white, so Grixis would be, for me, the combination of the best remaining colors. And all of the invasion is very good, but as as I've said before, Chandra's Felix, uh, Phoenix, Pyro Helix, sorry, with uh, Jaya becomes, you know, deal two to two different targets. It basically doubles the value of this card. Hmm. Tough pick. So the card we really want to take is uh, Kaya. And we could in case we end up red, black. But I think the responsible pick is to take a Mana Geode, but Kaya is just so strong. If I have to lean more, I mean, if I have to move away from blue playing black, red again, it's, I, I, I'm not doing this on purpose, but it's almost like I think... Uh, between two and three and three out of four drafts, I'm playing red black <laughs> because it's so open. <clears throat> but in this format, you want to splash blue cards because they are very powerful. Like Tamu's Epiphany, for example, can win you the game. So I'm not going to fall for the Nivna as a trap. We're just going to take Leading Edge. And again, it works with Profit, works with Spell Gorger. We do have Manticore, which makes, uh, which makes Bleeding Edge better. I mean, you know, leading edge into Manticore, you have a 4-4. So I'm actually glad we took Manticore in pack one over the, whatchamacallit, you know what I'm talking about. Now there's a, the 3-4 the flyer. Now there's a Flux Shareler and a Guild Globe. There's also a good black card with Herald of the Dread Horde. The Flux Channeler is much stronger. Problem is, we don't really have too much to a mat to proliferate onto. I think it's between Gil Globe and Herald. If we cut blue, I think I want to have a Herald in my deck. So let's just take that. Okay, now there's a Gleaming Overseer that I'm going to take. I think. Or maybe we should just take a Raging Crunch. But Gleaming Overseer is so good. It gives Menace and Hexproof. The first time I misread this card to read uh, Hexproof only, but don't forget about the Menace. So basically this is like, you know, putting down uh, an, like a partial Ongrath <laughs> for one of your creatures. So Mana Geode. Yeah, now I'll take a Mana Geode. I want to be able to play my cards. So Pegasus is probably out at this point. We're looking at some combination of these three colors. Crush Descent should not be in here. And probably Contentious Plan can go as well. So really the only cards worth playing. Gleaming Overseer, Tamiyo's Epiphany. Another Tamiyo's Epiphany? You betcha. I'll play two of these in the deck any day. As long as you have enough early stuff, 
like with double Tamiyo's Epiphany, I actually want uh, what's the worst Planeswalker that makes O threes? Like I'll play the, I'll play that card in this type of deck. So Casmina's Transmutation is the pick. Spellkeeper Weird over Toll of the Invasion. Easy Toll of the Invasion. So I think we're still red, but not clear about our second call. Yeah, this is where I take God, God Pharaoh Statue. Skulker's no more relevant card, inevitability. Not entirely, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I don't like that magic like f force assigns the last few cards. That's really random. We should have plenty of time remaining. It's such a glitch. Luckily, it doesn't impact it, it doesn't really impact anything. All right, we're not going to play Tosmir. We're not going to play third Tamiyo's Epiphany. Do we want a second Kaya with a Mana Geode? I think we do. I mean, this card's just so strong. Exile four creatures. Six mana pay twice. And it makes your opponent's creatures lose Hexproof. We don't really have anything that we're sacrificing, but Mayhem Devil can be good. Yeah, we'll get at least one Heartfire, or maybe maybe a Nahab. Okay, maybe we can get a Nahab. I think Nahab's still stronger than Sahili, because we're not really so committed to blue. There's also Kalos Dismissal in here, but come on, Nahab's Nahab. It's a powerful rare. Like if you have, this is a reason also to play pump spells, and it's good with Jaya. I mean, it's six power trample. <coughs> you can get it back with Aid the Fallen. Come on. Well, there's a Mizium tank. We do have fifteen non-creature spells, but there's also Heartfire and a Guild Globe. This is Crew One. Well, all my black cards are non-creature spells and all my blue cards are non-creature spells. Like, I think it can go well in our deck. Uh, Samet Spirit is good with that. For five mana, you could have a 7-5 that lets you dump some cards you don't need. The Fairy's Time Twist is usually the higher upside card. You can bounce your Gleaming Overseer, Invading Manticore, reset a Kaya. I don't think we're playing Bonds of Passion here. Um, I think I want to spare it. it. It works with Mizium Tank. It's a way to get a ton of damage across very quickly. You know, this, this thing is like plus three, plus one. So with Mizium Tank and Samet Spirit. Ah, you can't. Well, it's not going to work. Target creature, you need to first make this a creature, then you cast it. But you could, I guess you could cast on your creature or whatever, get a free activation. So I guess we take a Chain Whip Cyclops just because we only have one five drop. And I'd rather play this than an Invading Manticore because I think our deck is already quite good. And I prefer a lower, more consistent curve. Curve. No escape. I could see sideboarding into blue for no escape if I'm up against the God Eternal. Second under the God Pharaoh, perfect. So it looks like our deck is something like this. With maybe we don't need maybe we don't need Tamiya's Epiphanies. Let's see, uh, we get a heart fire. Heart fire with eight creatures is a problem though. Ouch. I guess I still take it. I'm not terribly excited with my curb, to be honest. Skulker. So with this deck, we really want to open Burning Prophet in our opening hand. <laughs> if we don't, we're kind of in trouble. Uh, 
Wow, what a weird deck. All right, I don't think this is, I'm saying right now, it's not good, unlikely to go three, you know, just because the curve is really off. Like, you need something earlier. And we only have one two drop. These decks don't really win without two drops. What is, all right, if I cut the black, I mean, black I'm playing because of two Kaya's contentious plan. I mean, the red blue is not that much better. No, it's just not better. Uh, all right, let's see, maybe something crazy happens and this deck actually ends up being good. <coughs> I wish I had something to play earlier, I do not. And I guess, you know, I mean, even, if, even though I don't need it, I could play a Mana Geode. It helps me get the six quicker to stabilize because I really need Kaya to come down. All right, let's, you know, these, these decks have a very hard time winning because if you're playing red, black, you want early stuff. We don't have early stuff, so this is the biggest risk. But who knows, maybe this deck works out better than we think. So we really want to have like Honor the God Pharaoh Bleeding Edge in our hand. And the best thing that can happen to us like is if we have Burning Prophet. Like if we have Burning Prophet and one land, that's a reason to keep that hand with this type of deck, unfortunately. Because, yeah, the problem with this, this deck is that it's super slow. Well, Pyrohelix is also good because it's it's going to stop early aggression if we have to deal with it. Okay, hard fire. So hopefully we can get something with uh, Chandra's Pyrohelix and of our opponent's turn and then start going off with Dariel. So it looks like opponent's stuck on two lands. Yep. We're going to try to take advantage of the situation. Davriel can also be used as a sac as sacrifice fodder for Heartfire. Should we need something? Okay, that's a perfect Chandra's Spire Helix target. Hopefully it does not have Giant Growth. If he has Giant Growth, this would be pretty sick. So a reason to do this now is to play around a wider range of combat tricks. Okay, perfect. So now uh, we just need to wait two turns and hopefully Kaya really stabilizes things for us, especially if our opponent's stuck on uh, three lands. It's going to be very difficult to come back against Kaya and, uh, you know, especially if I'm drawing good creatures like Spellgorger. So let's go Chain Loop Cyclops. If we don't really have good targets, we could play Kaya a turn later to get an extra counter off Spellgorger Weird. And it's not the worst idea to play Spell Gorgia Weird instead of Kaya next turn, especially if we don't have to kill anything, because that way we get to keep up hard fire to cash in a creature against removal. So that's a good perfect, that's a perfect target for Kaya. That's a reason to play Kaya now. You don't want to let Living Twister get going. And this also gives us an attack. Uh, actually, no, we're not going to attack because I'd rather keep Kaya alive. I think there's more value in, <coughs> in keeping Kai alive than getting poor damage. It's it's on board removal for, for no mana, for any anything, even a hexproof creature. So over the course of a game, it's probably worth missing out on four damage, even, a, even in a deck like ours. So let's see what this is. This is the plus one plus zero first strike. Divine Arrow? Okay, sure, no problem. Let's 
So spell gorger. I guess it's worth killing spell gorger. It's a good enough target. And I'll play Mayhem Devil as well. Get an extra attacker. Because this way, whatever he plays, uh, most likely we can kill with Heartfire, Sack, and Kyle. And then get in for five damage. Okay. Well, I may not even have to use Heartfire here. I can just. So what's better? I could play the second Kaya. First Kaya dies. Spell both of these attack is three threes and then he cracks back with Rising Populous. I think it's better to just hard fire Rising Populous now. Sac Kaya. Deal an extra damage. Yeah, because whatever he plays next turn, I can just kill with Kaya anyway. Okay, so he sacks in response, sure. Let's target opponent. So actually this triggers Mayhem Devil twice. Interesting that he killed Spellgorger instead of Mayhem Devil. So maybe I was wrong about this deck, I don't know. Let's see. My opponent may just have lands here and not do anything. And we don't have to worry about this card because our opponent's not playing black. So there's no reason to play Kaya now to show that we have it. I guess one example not to show Kaya if uh, my opponent's playing some weird Guild Globe and uh, Elder Spell <laughs> combo. But that's such a fringe, that's a very fringe case. Beat the Fallen's good. We can get our Kaya's back. Sure. All right, let's get back Chainwick Cyclops and I guess Kaya. <laughs> Have three Kai's? Is that greedy? I don't know. I think that's greedy. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's enough to make opponent snap concede. All right, so the deck's not doing too bad, but it's super slow. I mean, brutally, brutally super slow. All right, let's keep this. And we have Burning Profit in our opening hand, which is about as good as you can ask for. Thing doesn't get haste, does it? No. All right, well, hopefully we draw land next turn. Hopefully we draw mountain. So that way we can play both our red spells, keep busy for a while. Okay. Land. Nice. Yeah, so spell gorger into Mizium tank to get the counter. No reason to attack there. Just <coughs> waste time. Besides, my opponent is playing the 2-2 haste creature. So, okay, opponent plays his own spell gorger, that's fine. All right, lane's really good. So, I think I just want to play Herald. We miss out on getting the plus one, plus one counter, but we're not really attacking this turn anyway. 
I win the long game. I'm pretty sure that my deck is is going to be better positioned to kind of <coughs> drag things out with essentially three Kai's, if we consider Aid the Fallen as a card. Um, well, now I think I actually have an attack. I'm gonna play Museum Tank now. <clears throat> so our opponent probably has Divine Strike, in which case I only wanna attack with Spellgorger and Herald. And then I can leave out Burning Prophet to Chromisium Tank if I need to. Okay, Spell Gorger dies, that becomes a 3 3. If he has something else, it's kind of nasty, but I still get a 2 2 out of the deal. No blocks. Okay, good. Alrighty. So we really want swamps, but in general, we also want lands because we have invading manticore. I'm gonna take the hit because he's got worse creature up, <clears throat> which means that he can just attack through a museum tank as a three two. Okay, good down. He saw an extra two points of damage and he gets to draw a card and gets a plus one plus one counter. So in this scenario, it's a very good card for him. All right, so now we have a mountain. I think I'm gonna just hang back. So I'm gonna play this. I'm gonna have <clears throat> nine power worth of blocking. And I'm not sure why he's not attacking with worse creature. I guess he kept it up to bump spell gorger. Okay, so let's screw Museum Tank before Mayhem Devil dies. Yeah, we want to double block. I mean, look, if we get blown out, we get blown out. But again, we have a the Fallen. We can replay something next turn. I guess we can replay a Mizium Tank or a Spell Gorger as a worst case scenario. And again, we're just surviving a Kaya. If we can get if we can get swamps, then huh? Okay, yeah, well that's that's kind of a blowout, but <coughs> game's far from over. Turret Ogre's not enough to double block but good enough, better than anything here, better than nothing. I, I can afford to take one hit. And we need to remember that that's an eight, eight off worst creature. So I'm okay taking eight once. Next turn, I'll start chump blocking if I don't get a land to play Manticore. Okay. Again, just sitting back here. Now I do need to worry about the worst creature because he could start pinging in the air. And at six, it's uh, not good for me. We were not fortunate. We were unfortunate to draw like five, five mountains in one swamp this game. All right, so he's offering basically like a trade for this turret ogre. Okay. It's good that he's not attacking there, by the way. Very good. So I don't think I'm playing Dariel. I think I'm playing Aid the Fallen right now to get something I can play like Turret Ogre.
Yeah, because this way, even, even if he has removal, I'm guaranteed to be able to double block, spell Gorge or Weird, and trade, even if he becomes an 8-8. Okay. Uh, I don't understand why he's not attacking with this creature. Jeez, he's just letting me, you let me catch up. Ah, ah, I know he's not attacking with this creature. Never mind, because I have turd ogre, duh. <laughs> you know, it's funny. It's, it's one thing, you know, if, if you're not seeing your, at least it's better than me not seeing that I'm attacking with my flyer into my opponent's ogre. I caught that uh, just now. All right, so we've stabilized, and if we can get another another swamp then i think we won and anyway we're just dealing to every turn right now no attack is good uh this card again and oh look at this we have kaya so i'm gonna kill this seven seven okay so again maybe this deck is not as bad as i initially thought 2-0 to start, not bad. See you next match. So let's play first. Ugh. We'll find some early stuff. Hopefully. I mean, our deck is pretty high curve. We could just lose because of keeping this open in hand, but as long as I can at least find uh, under the Pharaoh, under the God Pharaoh, it should be okay. That should let me cycle a land, draw a card. Let's see. Nice, perfect. So now Honor the God Pharaoh would be really good. We would get a scry, get to uh, toss one of these lands, probably a mountain so that I have triple black guaranteed for Kaya. Okay, Nahab's also a good draw again. I just want to hang back here. So not now I'm set. I mean, I, I don't have a three drop, which could make me fall behind a little bit, but pretty sure I'll find the land and then I have place for the next three turns. So let's see how this deck holds up. I mean, technically my deck is set up really well against white green because I have so much exile effects um so you know with kaya like rising populace doesn't even get the counter when you exile something because it doesn't say leaves the battlefield it says dies so that's a significant difference okay if that's all my opponent's doing that's great now I'm, now i'm feeling pretty comfortable so even if he's got like removal next turn i still have a blocker. Okay, I'm still playing the hab. No need to attack. I don't, I don't have an attack anyway, not really. Bad together. All right, all right. But again, no attack really. And I'm I get to continue developing my board. Probably just want to play Jaya, Scry One, and kill Larun Enforcer. I think that's the play. I also get the Scry One. So this gets me maximum value off burning profit as well. I mean, although at this point, like, I guess anything in my deck is a good draw. 
but at this juncture, I think I'd rather have something other than a land. This makes Rising Populous a 3-3 now. Uh, he can attack with it. I didn't think about that, did I? Yeah. Uh, all right. It's rising populace. If he wants to tap down Burning Prophet, I'll make him use at least one mana on his turn. So it just feels bad giving him a plus one plus one counter there. No attacks. Yeah, probably should have been better just to play Chain Whoop Cyclops there. I didn't think of. Rising populace triggering. Okay, I mean. Yeah, this is frustrating. I'm not gonna get my second trigger off Jaya, but if I get a land, I'm playing Invading Manticore. Or just a chain of Cyclops. No need to attack. Dumping a land there is also good because this lets us dig to Kaya quicker. And Kaya is what's going to win us the game, I think. Because green-white depends a lot on investing resources into your board state. So you're kind of, there's a plus one, plus one counter theme. So, okay, perfect. No attacks is really, really good. Chandra's Pyrohelix, so I can kill both Wrangler and Pouncing Link. So actually, with Jaya, this thing deals two. So I can actually even kill Larun Enforcer and Pouncing Links. I don't want to do it now, though. I think what I'm going to do is play Spellboard Your Weird. And guess I want to pass, see what my opponent does, and then maybe Chandra's Pyre Helix, end of my opponent's turn. <laughs> I'd rather use it when he's tapped out. Okay. Guess we could also use it. Uh, you know what, I probably want to use it before he untaps with La Rune and Force your scratch that. So these two, Kill both, get a scry, put a plus one, plus one counter. <laughs> okay, so then he saves his Larun Enforcer, but the Wrangler still dies. And land, probably again, I don't want. I have triple black already. Wonder Strike would be bad, yeah. I guess it's not the worst. Like it's still no, never mind. I take seven. But look, he's got two cards left. Ah, both of them attacking Jai. That's actually good. So I save seven points of damage. Like that's actually really important. I think my opponent made a mistake there. Ooh, that's kind of useless. Let's make him exile a card. Or discard a card from his hand. Let's scry. Again, I don't need lands. Let's see what we got. Oh, we got Mawu. Good. And uh, maybe Samet's Spirit helps us trade. No attacks. <laughs> OK. 
Okay. Sure. Okay, we got to remember that this links has first strike actually, so we can't block it. Yeah. Okay, so Sam it dies. I'm not sure what saves me here. Aid the Fallen, guess it kind of helps. We can get Nahab and Davriel. Don't care about land. I need some gas. Nope. How many lands did I scry already off this Burning Prophet? Geez. What is that, like four lands? Let's see. Fire Helix, Jaya, two, three, four, five, something like five. Four lands, maybe. Again, that is just there kind of like to, to, draw, to, to draw damage to him. I'm not really expecting this guy to do anything uh, spectacular. I'm trying to buy time here. Yeah, again, I think it's a mistake for opponent to attack Davriel with both. He's missing out on opportunity to do damage to me. And uh, I get to develop my board state, and I'm still at 20 life. With a lot of action in hand. I wish I could have left up one red for Samet Spirit, but fortunately I can't do that. Interesting. So attacking with first strike, so I could double block. But you know what? I really don't need to. I could just take four damage. I'm not a danger of losing. Sure. Okay, under the Godfair is really good. I think we can discount Mana Geode. I can also go Mana Geode, Honor the God Pharaoh, and then discard Samet Spirit, but I think maybe having a combat trick isn't the worst here. So let's discard Mana Geode. Get the Scry, another Honor the God Pharaoh. Uh, Probably not. I'd rather I'd rather get to Kaya quicker. Like if I draw land and Kaya here, that's just so gas. Okay, two lands. And just pass. The, like another reason to bottom um, Honor the God Pharaoh there is because I can also play Invading Manticore, keeping up Samet Spirit next turn with seven mana, uh, which means that I'm not really going to benefit from Honor the God Pharaoh until turn 13. No attacks. Quick time check, I'm ahead by two minutes. This game is dragging out a little bit. Ouch. Well, I think that's gonna get us. That is definitely gonna get us, because he can, yeah, oh, geez. Wonder is too strong. I hope he attacks with Lauren and Forcer though, because I can actually get him with Burning Prophet. If he gets greedy and attacks with Lauren and Forcer, then we could, we, we, I don't know, let's see. <laughs> I'm really hoping he does that. So then I would only take like 10 and go to six. Ugh. I almost feel like I should chump pouncing links. Ah, okay, chooses to exile Neheb.
Okay, okay. So best block here, probably want to kill Thundering Saratok. I don't know what his last card is. But let's double block. There's no need to double block. Let's just block like this and hope that Salmon Spirits holds up. Scry one. Well, whoa, nope, nope, nope. Reset blockers. And just this guy. Okay. Icky defensive Salmon Spirit. Not what the guard's designed for. There she is. Okay. So now we got some hope. Now we got some hope. But honestly, I'd rather play an invading Manticore first. Because this also gives me a 3-3, which blanks the Pouncing Links. The smaller of the two. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm still in a lot of trouble. Because opponent's got like triple removal on board with Lauren Enforcer being to tap something down at the end of my, my turn, at the start of my opponent's turn. And then Wonder can clear out Invading Manticore. So the only good thing going for me is zombie army blanks and smaller pouncing legs. That's it. Because I'm pretty sure Manticore goes bye bye. Profit may not even bother tapping profit. Okay, so exiles my untapped creature. Interesting, doesn't tap anything. Passes, wow, okay. That seems like a mistake. Oh boy, all right, now we can get Gaia going. Not sure what he's, what he's planning there. Yep, let's keep that on top. It's one of our better spells. Lawrence Enforcer gets exiled. So now I think uh, we have a good chance of actually winning this game. I just have to remember Wander's static ability that my direct damage spells are turned off. So something like a Pyrohelix would be useless. Uh, I can deal with that. I can exile that. That's not a problem. I can maybe even start attacking. Like that's a juicy target for Kaya to kill here. Oh, never mind. I have Bleeding Edge. No need to waste Kaya on that. So let's go one, two, three. Scry and a mass. So now I have a five, five, which would require a double block. Mountain goes to the bottom. Okay. So let's attack actually opponent with the five, five. I don't, really don't care about the wonder at this point. He does have, he does have wonder, what, we saw one wonder strike. I guess I should kill the wonder because uh, green doesn't have, I mean, green has some proliferate as does white. Let's attack first. Okay, nothing. Good. Get rid of this. All right, now I just want to win the game fast. Geez, at this rate, we might go 6 and 0 with this deck. Like, we were just lucky that opponent uh, wasn't doing much. And honestly, like, Burning Prophet won us the game. It drew us the equivalent of like four cards by scrying so many lands to the bottom. But 
Okay. Uh, what can we do? I don't think we can do much. Like the problem with our deck is our sideboard plan is quite bad. Bond of Passion does kill Pegasus. But I think invading Manticore does a better job because the amassed creature can't be tapped by Larun Enforcer. And Bond of Passion is too, like, too unreliable. No reason to sideboard into blue. Let's just run this back. All right, let's send this one back. Yep, perfect. With Burning Prophet and Davriel. One of our best cards, but we got to bottom it. Actually, Toll of the Invasion is really, really good here. And as is Bleeding Edge, if we can get another Swamp, uh, that could be very good. But unless I'm threatened, I probably want to play Toll of the Invasion first. All right, it's a little bit awkward to draw Kaya here, but but I guess any land lets us scry with Burning Prophet. So we'll dig to more lands, make sure we hit our swamps and get the six mana for double Kaya. Okay. That's unfortunate. Not all part of the game. A little less than 50% of our deck is lands, 15 out of 31 cards. Again, as long as we can get Bleeding Edge, we can catch up real fast. Okay, now here he does absolutely nothing on this board state, so I'm actually quite happy that this is all I'm dealing with. All right, perfect. So now we can get Davriel, we can scry, and we can start. Yeah, let's scry this to the bottom. We don't need this, we need some lands. And let's make a point of discard. Absolutely no reason to attack. I would rather protect uh, Davriel and just stay defensive. Okay, no attack is good. We make our opponent discard again. And after he discards, we we play uh, Toll of the Invasion. Get him down to one card, scry again. Play, keep that on top. Especially good that it's a swamp. <laughs> oh, we get Kaya and we leave a land. <coughs> wow. Uh, still no attacks, just absolutely not necessary. And now Davriel starts dealing two per turn. Okay, that's not a problem. Uh, I kind of want to save Bleeding Edge for the Pegasus. But then again, I have Turret Ogre to block it. Could also just go Mizium Tank. It's Bleeding Edge. Let's just Bleeding Edge Populus or Mizium Tank. I don't know. I guess, all right, let's play Mizium Tank. Let's try to get the most value here. He's down to one card. And uh, we know it's a land because we already saw it. Um, there's no point in him not playing it. I mean, Mizium Tank is kind of a, it's a beefy 4-3 trample. Yep, definitely want to swamp for double Kaya. And again, just passing, no attacking. Ah, I know he's, he's keeping a land because of uh, Davriel. 
He wants to keep two lands in hand to not take damage. That would make sense. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I mean, our deck is just systematically going to take apart our opponent's game plan. Um, Slate Ogre. Just keep building out our board state. I mean, it's kind of silly to save Bleeding Edge for Pegasus, but this is the more mana efficient play. And then I have a better attack next turn. Sure. I mean, I could just sit back and just let Davriel do all the work also. Uh, Neheb's good, one of our best cards. Let's keep it on top. Okay, so opponent didn't want to continue. So again, this is why green red, uh, or uh, sorry, green white is, it's it's like a trap because it seems like it's a really good supported archetype, but it's really not. So undefeated going into the finals with a deck that I thought would be mediocre at best. See you in match three. Welcome to the finals. Two more matches from a 3060. So with the Burning Prophet, man, our you know the Magic Gods have been good to us. We've had Burning Prophet almost in every opening hand, and this is a perfectly fine hand, um, especially on the draw. If we can get any land, we go Burning Prophet into Under the God Pharaoh into Toll of the Invasion or Herald even, and we're set. Even like a Pyro Helix wouldn't be a bad draw because the Scry 1 of Burning Prophet can increase the chances of us hitting our land drop and that's the land there's perfect. Burning Prophet. If I get a Swamp, I'll probably, I mean, I prefer to play Total of the Invasion before Burning Prophet. Okay, Jai's greeting is unfortunate. I'm not gonna draw four cards by skipping three lands like game one. But, I mean, that, by the way, you know, using a Jai's greeting on Burning Prophet just goes to show how much that card is respective. Okay, Iron Bully. We can beat an Iron Bully. We can exile that. Uh, perfect. Let's go Toll of the Invasion and see if we can disrupt our opponent's hand. Oh, my Lord. All right, well, it's got to be Ral's Outburst. I need to take a print screen to understand the pain I'm going to be up against. Um, man, there's an argument for taking Obnixilis' cruelty because Ral's outburst doesn't kill invading Manticore or Chain Whip Cyclops, but he doesn't have black mana. Rather take Ral's outburst, whatever, I'll take my licks. I just don't want him to draw. I mean, Ral's Outburst is good. It can even kill the Amass token, draw a card. I'd rather not mess with it. It's one of the better removal spells in the format. Yeah, like Ral's Outburst against Herald is not too, too worrisome. There's no point in uh, keeping Zombie back to double block because he's most likely going to Yeah, like, I mean, if I double block, you could just use Ral's Outburst and kill Herald. No, actually, no, then I would amass, and then actually, I could, I could have double blocked. Never mind. But again, I have Chandra's Pyre Helix to deal with the bully. And I will, because uh, uh, Izzet has a contentious plan to proliferate, so any proliferation would get Iron Bully outside Chandra's Pyrokelix range. So, okay, 
burning prophet we can also beat ogre okay so we got some choices we can maybe go under the no i don't want to play under the godfather i don't want to toss any of these cards into the graveyard uh again i think the game plan is to just be defensive because my hand is packed. I mean, I have like more spells than he has cards in hand. Um, I know. I also know what he has, so I can play around it. He's got Ral's Outburst, and he's going to play Cyclops most likely right now. We can answer with our own Cyclops. Same with Spirit. Could probably discard that. It's not going to help us now. I'd rather get a land and keep up Chandra's Pyrohelix. In fact, I'll just use it now on Bully, I guess. Just to get it off the board, guaranteed. And pass. Sure, okay. So he's really doing this just to just to draw a card. That's kind of the main main motivation. And uh, let's see if he attacks with both. He does. Okay, so if he has Samet's Spirit as one of his three cards, then the double block on Chain Whip Cyclops is real bad. But I'll take my chances. I still get an amaz the creature out of the deal, and then I can aid the fallen my Herald of the Dread Horde back to my hand at some point. Perfect. Still didn't, doesn't have black mana for Obnixilis' cruelty. I do want to start attacking. Sure. Going to place his own invading manticore. We're going to stare at each other for a while. No reason to play Aid the Fallen here because I'd rather wait until we ha we also have a Planeswalker in our graveyard to get maximum value of this. All right. Well, now he's now up next to cruelty is online. He's probably going to exile manticore. Sure. Whatever we can actually getting back a uh, manticore with the aid the fallen might not be that bad. In fact, if we get a land, maybe it's worth doing it just to have a guaranteed, you know, six seven worth of stats with our opponent being down in one card, and rouse out. Okay, guild globe. So he's used both his rouse outbursts. It's kind of good. Oh, never mind. I'm sorry. I took one from his hand. He used one of them, and then the other I got with Total of the Invasion. No attacks here, which is great. Perfect. So now, Aid the Fallen becomes much better. And we got his last card. Let's see what it is. Island. Fine. And let's start dealing some damage. <laughs> Mesium tank, not impressive, but again, if my opponent has removal, I get to activate it for free, basically. This is exactly where Dariel is first pickable, six damage already, I think. Sure. Again, this is not doing much. But there's really even no point in minusing Davrio here, like six. Stacking Davrio. Yeah, I mean, he's got zero cards. Am I missing anything? This is a good double block for me. Maybe he wants to kill uh, Davriel with Iron Bully next turn. That could be his plan if he sees that I have one card in hand. Just get him back with Aid the Fallen. I'll trade a 4-5 five for 5-6. Five, 
like when you're like this is a, honestly kind of a gift because yeah well swamp there's not a good draw okay let's just hold back Iron Bully kills Dabriel. I imagine that's the plan. Sure. No play. Okay. So we go Aid the Fallen. Let's go Manticore, Davriel. We can even attack with Museum Tank here. Actually, we can attack with the zombie army as well. Yeah, actually, this is lethal. <laughs> this is ten. This is uh, ten damage. So, okay, opponent concedes. Wow, one away from a three L six hole with a with what I thought would be a very mediocre deck. So we haven't played hard fire once, by the way. Um. Davriel's MVP so far in Kaya. And actually reading Manticore also. Double chain with Cyclops, that's that's the ticket. Oh boy. Magic's a fun game. You learn something new every day. Yep, Burning Prophet makes this hand perfectly keepable on the draw. Keep. Nice. I kind of hope we dodge Jai's greeting at least once. I mean, there's so much value just even in being able to scry one over the course of a limited game. Because I already have all the lands I'll ever need, right? I'll find my third swamp sooner or later. So if I can even scry away one land with Burning Prophet here off Toll of the Invasion, that's just, it'll, it'll feel really good. So hopefully we don't get Jai's greeting. Okay, yours, fine. Uh... Yeah, let's go Toll of the Invasion. See how to break up our opponent's game plan. Bottom this. Okay, Ogre, Roll Reversal, and Ral's Outburst. <laughs> let's, I'm gonna let him keep Roll Reversal. It's so easy to play around. Uh, What's he gonna do? Trade his keyword for like, I'll, then I'll draw cards off Cyclops and stuff. <laughs> um, so the question is, do I want to attack? All right, so we know it's in our opponent's hand. We know that he's got the role reversal and a creature. I forgot what creature he had. Do we want to kill Kiora or do we want to attack Kiora? <laughs> I think I just want to attack our opponent. Honestly, I don't even, I don't really care about Cure. I know what he has in his hand. I don't win in this game by killing planeswalkers. I won by killing opponents. And Cure is really not one of those. Uh yeah, because like, okay, he's he can draw cards, sure, but I mean I have a game plan also, kind of. Let's go Davriel. And I will actually chump with zombie army. To keep Davriel alive, because this card here is worth more than a 1-1 one, one on the board, especially when I'm going to put Chain Whip Cyclops down next turn. Okay, I mean, again, Chain Whip Cyclops gives me like a double block, so it's not the worst. 
Kaya would be a nice draw. Let's see what we get. Swamp. All right, so one of his cards is the... So if he's got a roll reversal, do I want to trade a Cyclops for a zombie army? So if he does that, then I can double block the ogre. If, yeah, I don't care. If, I, I don't really care if he wastes a card and gives me a 2-2. Two -two. I mean, it's like pay three mana. You know, put plus two plus, like, put two minus two minus two counters and target opponent, target creature opponent controls and gives one of your creature plus two plus two. Or two counters. It's not, uh, it's not too scary in my scenario. So we don't know what his other two cards are. So he could really blow us out. Like if this is uh, I don't want to double block. I just want to trade like this. Yeah. This gives me a target to get with Aid the Fallen again, uh, along with Davriel. So this doesn't kill anything because he only has one spell in his graveyard. So it's good that I didn't go for, so if I went for double block, what would have happened? I'm not quite sure. Uh, can't, can't think. Turn off a lot of yields. So what are my options? I can play Spellgorger we Weird and then Aid the Fallen. Seems like the best option. Get Cyclops and Davriel. Still 20 life, and then at some point Jaya can kill the Electromancer at the bottom of this. We don't have a good block on Manticore, but we refilled our hand, and I would probably rather play Jaya after Cyclops because she's going to give my red creatures plus one plus zero, but let's see what opponent does here. Okay, even internal. Let's see if he offers the trade with zombie army. Uh, yeah, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trade here and then I'm gonna kill Electromancer with Jaya, I think. He could roll a reversal Jaya for QR though, which could be a problem. So maybe that's not the best play. Let's just play Chain Whip Cyclops. And threaten the double block on Manticore. I wouldn't be surprised if he uses roll reversal here to give me his Burning Prophet. That would be bad because then I would have to double, then the only block I have is Cyclops or Electromancer. But see, he's not even doing that. He's just keeping it for like something more important. All right, I think, Three cards in hand. We know two of them could be a combat trick. All right, I'm gonna try to double block here because again, I could kill Electromancer with Jaya and I could draw fire to Jaya. Okay, perfect. So we keep Burning Prophet. Maybe there's an argument for killing Aven Eternal, but again, I need to get this four power creature off the board. All right, so what? can I do here? Under the God Pharaoh, can't cast both. I don't have eight mana. Playing Under the God Pharaoh and Davriel would draw fire to Davriel, give me a 1-1, one, one. give me a double block and an Electromancer. Okay, let's do that. Museum Tank is not going to help us. Uh, Ogre will because of reach and let's make opponent discard 
Okay, he discards roll reversal. Yeah, so let's see what his last card is. I might not be too happy about his, what his about what his last card is if he's discarding roll reversal because that is a game winning spell. Honestly, like <laughs> a little bit concerned. So the correct play is to attack with everything. Yeah. So I lose to any instant or sorcery speed spell. He may have missed the fact that he could have won off roll reversal by pumping burning profits. Because that would threaten lethal. And then he could have finished me with Davriel. Let's see. Let's see what happens. I mean, I'm dead anyway. At this point, I'm just playing for information. I don't think I can come back. Okay, yeah. This. Okay. Let's concede not to waste time. There's no way I can come back from this. <clears throat> so if we do 3 0, we're not going to 3 0, 6 0. Uh, I really don't think we have a side. Bond of Passion is not going to do anything for us. Unless we, unless we really want to go, like, it's, it's like gambling. I'd rather just have an invading manticore or a lower curve, really. That's what it's about. I think I still want to be on the play. Okay, this is decent. Fire Helix is actually a good draw. We can pretty much kill anything OP plays. Wow, he kept the one lander? Oh no, greed, greed, the greed. Come on, bro, you don't want to do that. You don't want to keep a one lander. I'm going to get so far ahead. Okay. Another Honor the Godfire is actually good. Oh no, we did it. <laughs> Well, okay, really, we won there, I think, based on our opponent's mistake. Uh, this is not my third 3-0 in a row, unfortunately. Uh, I lost two matches before this, but um, I'm still on a very good winning streak. Uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave feedback, and I'll see you next time. Take care.